Okay, uh, this is the day of truth and reconciliation. Now, um, I'd like to start the lecture by acknowledging that uh, the land that we are gathering today uh, is a traditional territory of the Wendat, Anishnabek, Hadanosanai, Metis, and the Mississaugas. This is the land of the First Nation that we are sharing with them. Um, I know that um, this is some kind of a cliche to, to talk about these things, say, hey, I'm cool, I, I, I'm, I'm following the, uh, the thing that everybody's doing, but, but seriously, uh, go home and read about the First Nation of Canada, and I'm not joking, do it. And um, see the pain and the injustice they endured uh, during the colonization of Canada and what they went through. This is not something that I'm, and I'm telling that with tears coming to my eyes, uh, thinking, thinking about the news that you hear every day and think about the seven-year-old sister that you have or a daughter that you have and just imagine it's taken away from you and, and put in some institution to be abused for years and, and your land is taken and you've been, and this is crazy. I mean, like, think about it. This is Canada. Like, you hear these things, like, you think, like, it's, like, 200 years ago or 100 years old slavery in some place. No, it's Canada 40 years ago, 50 years ago. It's like my age. It's not something that happened in a distant time. So, um, anyways, that's my take on that, and I and I really hope that uh, uh, um, you you read about them and you respect their traditions and their uh, right of ownership of uh, what we share with them. Okay. Anyways. Uh, let the games begin, and we're going to start our lecture today. We're going to go back on what we have talked about uh, before we went through uh, uh, explaining what constructors and destructors are by um, showing that we can automate the creation and the destruction of any object that we have in C++ language to make sure things get built properly. Um, without any uh, mistake and uh, things get wiped out properly from uh, the memory after the objects you created are gone, okay? Sorry, right before the objects you created uh, are dead, okay? So when the object gets created, you create a procedure and that procedure that we call it the constructor, will be called automatically to do things right after its creation. And then when everything goes on, at the end, right before the object is supposed to die for any reason, going out of scope, it's dynamic and you deleted it, for any reason it wants to get off memory, automatically that procedure is called to clean up the mess before the object is gone. We call those things constructors and destructors. They take the shape of functions, but we said they are not functions. I'll explain today um, a little bit about that um, and uh, kind of clear things up and, and tell you what happens really when we, when we do stuff like trying to call a constructor. We're going to see what happens, and I'm going to tell you don't do it until you understand really what happens behind the scene, and then you can start doing it if you uh, start um, uh, pretend that you're calling a constructor, essentially creating temporary nameless objects. We're going to come to it and we'll understand exactly what it means. So let's uh, split the code in half and have the, the source of container up, and then we can actually uh, discuss uh, what we are going to talk about. First of all, back there at the end of the class, can you see uh, the, the, the code properly? Is it large enough? Okay. Too small? Okay. So this is okay. All right. 
All right, just, I'm, ju I'm just adjusting so I have the m m most amount of real estate that I can have. So um, I will take all the comments out from what we had last time, have a clean code, because we know what these things are and we're gonna go through them uh, uh, and, and we'll see what happens. So I think this one has a bug. Uh, this is the read? Yeah, I think the read has a bug that we have to fix too. that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's, let's talk about read over here. I think it had a bug over here that we had to fix. So uh, uh, we get a line. It gets a line if it's, everything is okay. Nothing is remained in memory in, in the buffer of the keyboard because get line extracts the backslash in. Are we okay with that? First, I'm going to fix the thing, then we're going to go to constructor. So it reads the line up to 256. If it doesn't fail, it means we have nothing in the keyboard. Uh, everything is extracted. We have a clean keyboard to work with. Then if C in fails, then uh, it means something went wrong, and we have to clean up the keyboard. If C in actually fails in here, it means uh, the... Uh, what should we call it? Uh, let me just look at the main and see what we have done over there. Yeah. So if read actually fails in here, uh, if the C in fails, this one's going to fail and it's going to explain that the content is too long and it's going to say error printed true. And uh, then uh, therefore all the other C ins are going to fail and it is not going to show any error messages and keeps going. Uh, so if, if that is failed, this is going to fail, nothing happens over here, this is going to fail, nothing happens over here, and it comes right down to this point. And now, if this thing fails, it's, gonna, uh, uh, um, it's going to show the message if it's not printed. But as you see, when we are getting out over here, now we have garbage in, in the memory and read it and clean it up. Okay, so if scene fails, this fails, error is printed, this fails, error is printed or not, this fails, error is printed or not, okay, and then it comes over here and we have the garbage left in the keyboard. Not a good thing. Let's say it doesn't fail. With C in, when C in is called, it extracts the backslash in from the keyboard, we are good. Then it comes over here, reads an integer. If reads an integer, if it fails, we have garbage in, memory, in, in keyboard. Again, it's not cleaned. If it doesn't fail, we have one backslash and left in the keyboard because when minimum one backslash and left in the keyboard because C in reads the integer, but not the backslash n. And if somebody enters an integer and lots of garbage after, still it's successful because it read the integer, but we have lots of garbage in the memory. So that's one problem. And the same thing over here. So first of all, if it doesn't fail and I want to read, no matter what happens when I'm at this stage, I either have one new line or lots of garbage, correct? And a new line if it doesn't fail. So if it does not fail, what I need to do is to still wipe out and clear the keyboard to guarantee that next entry will be done properly. Because if somebody, when they are entering the volume, they write 10 and they put liters after that and hit enter. 10 will be picked up, volume is read properly, liters is in the keyboard. Then it comes to pick up the amount. It sees L in the keyboard, therefore it's going to fail. So no matter what happens, if it fails or not, I have to wipe it out afterwards. So it's a good idea right after this, I go C and dot, ignore. I don't know, 10,000 characters and backslash in. If it's one backslash in, it's going to get wiped out. If it's more than that, it's going to get wiped out. Still, when the amount is about to be read, it is a, uh, it's a clean keyboard. 
the exact same thing after seeing a mount. When you read from the keyboard, either fail or not, you have at least one backslash in there. So why don't we just clean it up? So in here, I'm going to say C and ignore. And backslash N. And then, uh, oh, we can't do that because, uh, sorry, we can't do the ignore over here because if it fails, ignore won't work. So I have to do it only if it not, doesn't fail. Will it? Ignore won't work. I have to clear it. So, wait a minute. So, this is not clearing. Clearing is happening with the other one. No, we can do it. Let it, let it, let it fail. It doesn't matter. See, I'm thinking out loud over here. If seeing over here fails, this ignore will fail too. And everything else will fail. Therefore, we can detect it over here. No problem, right? And uh, we can, so we can continue ignoring and have the, uh, have the read work exactly as is. And read is exactly returning the value, so it's gonna be uh, clean at when he starts. So yeah, so that's that one. I'm gonna put, you, and I'm gonna come up to it some, some conclusion over here. So this is gonna ignore, this is gonna ignore, and then it's gonna continue no matter what happens. It is going to ignore, I don't need to flush the key in here. So after each read, I'll try to ignore. If it fails, I don't care. If it doesn't, whatever. So everything is fine and we are going through this now. Okay, so read right now is returning this as a container. So when it starts reading, the container should be an empty container. Nothing should be in there. Okay, because of that fact, because of that fact, before I start reading anything, I'm going to wipe it out. I want to read something in my... Uh, read right because I want to read I'm gonna say first clean up and I think my cleanup initializes too clean up where is my cleanup oh cleanup only deletes okay so afterwards I initialize there we go so now if you take a look at what we have done we say start reading first wipe everything that I already have now start. So if it fails at the end, if, they, if it fails at the end, I can actually, after everything is done over here, if it actually finally ends, fails at the end, what I can do is uh, simply uh, clear the, the read. So what I can do over here is to say, right at the end, I'm going to say if cn.fail, cn.clear. cn.clear, cn.ignore, wipe the keyboard completely. Why did I do that? Because if they, um, if they run the read and after it is empty, it means the read was unsuccessful, as, in, as simple as that. So they can detect it. It's a very messy read, as you see. We're going to clean it up later on, but that's not my concern. The reason that I have written that thing to show you that when you are actually writing a program, the way you saw I struggled with this thing, and it's a messy one, unorganized, it has to get fixed because we did it on the fly in the class. But that shows you that when you are actually writing a program in real life, the engine of the program, a program that is supposed to deal with a user, uh, with a, uh, it's a, a, it has a user interface. I'm not talking about an engine of something that has nothing to do with the, with the user. I'm saying when you're writing a program that is supposed to interact with the user, in reality, around 40% of your effort goes to do the business logic, what actually the application is supposed to do. 60% is to do, deal with the stupidity of the user. Because you have no idea what the user is going to do. And as you see, I'm jumping up and down over here. We're going to go through this actually as a challenge. Get the read and try to actually up and make, it sure, make sure it works properly. How? Assume that if the read fails, 
it sets the uh, read to an empty state. So we can always check. We can read and check. If it's empty, we're going to say uh, the, uh, it didn't read properly. So we can actually detect that. Okay? The caller program should detect if read failed. That's that. Um, and, and clean up the code. Okay? So that's, that's about the read. Because I remember that we had a bug and I had to fix something. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's your responsibility. So I'm going to say not tested. This is not tested. And it is messy. Clean up the code. And make it efficient. Now everybody says, what do I do to learn? This is what you do to learn. Okay, get someone's code, hack it, fix it, and uh, send the message on uh, the 244 teams and help, and put your cleanup version of this for everyone to see. Okay, get identified, uh, kind of become visible. I have no idea what I'm like if it's gonna work over here. I just went through it, and hopefully, uh, it is gonna be okay. We'll see. Uh, like, for example, this code is redundant. I could simply put this uh, ignore over here in, in here because the if statement over here is already doing that, right? So uh, this is redundant. Fix it. Anyways, let's go back. So clear about the read and write. Let's go talk about constructors. So with the constructors over here, we said that the constructor actually initializes things and, and, and makes sure your object is ready to work with whatever is supposed to be done. Now, in here, we have a constructor with one argument that sets the other values to 2.5 each, assuming that if somebody doesn't mention what the, the, the size of a container is in their constructor, I want it to be 2.5 liters and I want it to be full. Are we okay with that? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay. So, I just, what I wanted to say is that first, you can initialize the values of your class inside class when you are actually creating the variables, the member variables, the attributes. Therefore, eliminate the need for init. Because init over here initializes things to null, zero, and zero, correct? What I could do over here was this. By having this universal initialization, I am telling any version of the container is created before the constructor is called. Initialize the values, then call the constructor. Therefore, this constructor does not need to do any type of initialization. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. So that's this, so this initialization like that. We have another initialization over here that sets the contents, so it's essentially a set. Now, let's say I did not have this initialization and I want to do the, uh, the content setting over here by myself, which is essentially what init does in here. So what I wanted to, what I want to do, not to, I want to have this if statement, let's say I don't have the init, and I want to have it in here. So this will be my uh, code. Let's take this out. So in here, I'm going to take this, this thingy out. Let's say I did not have that in it thing, and I want to initialize my object manually in here. I didn't have a function for it. This is what I have to do when the const constructor is called, right? I have to get, get the content, see if the content is a valid thing to be copied. If that's the case, I want to go up, come over here and then set the values to null. Are we okay with this? First of all, I don't need to do anything over here anymore because all these values are already set to null. Because all the values are already set to null, there is no need to do anything in here. I just need to set the content and the rest of them are null already. 
But the problem is that I want them to be 2.5, correct? Because I want it to be 2.5, I'm going to write over here M amount. Over here is set to 2.5. Or inside, I'm going to write M amount is 2.5. M amount is 2.5 and the other one too, right? But there is another way to initialize. So not only you can initialize the values in here, and by the way, these values could be initialized to anything. I could put over here 100, which means when the object is created, the value will be 100 in there. So you can put any value you want in there. And you can have the initialize to be done in a traditional way. You can actually do 100 over here. It works the same way. So all these things work. I could make this thing zero. I will make so any type of initialization you could do it over here. But what if I want to have them initialized here? This is how it's done. There is a place inside the constructor's code where you are implementing it that you can say before the constructor is done, do something to my class. I call that area initialization area. Let me first take these hundreds out and make them zero. So I'm going to say over here, same as below, just to remember that, okay? So either I need, I do this, I'm going to actually, uh, so uh, initialize it over here, but if I want to do, add this, this the, uh, set these values to an initial value before the constructor is done, and it's essentially initialize them, there is a place inside my constructor, I call it, Fardot calls it, it's, there is no in textbook or anything like that. They don't call it this. I call it this one because it is more um, uh, kind of understandable and fits for students. So remember it as that and then we're going to learn what is its real name. Anyways, so I call that initialization area. Initialization area is the space between the closed uh, parentheses of your constructor and your open curly bracket. This area is a place in which if you write code to initialize the members of the uh, container, it will actually happen. How? Look at me. I'm going to write a column. Then I put the exact name of the variable. So I'm going to say M volume, for example. And in here, I will put either the traditional way of initialization, let's say 2.5 I want it to be, or I can put it in a universal way, the, the, aggreg the aggregate initialization that we learned. So I can say over here, for example, M volume, and I'm going to put over here 2.52. This one I did it with a curly bracket, just to show you that both are possible. Has or see, it's telling me it, is ha as it has already been initialized. What? Oh, M volume, sorry. M, uh, what is that? M amount. Okay. And what happens is that when you write the constructor like this, you tell to the compiler, I want volume to be initialized. And you specifically mention it over here. This initialization takes precedence to this one which means when you write over here, M volume is 2.5, that M volume 2.5 will overwrite the value of this one. Actually, it will, not be, it will not be set to zero at the moment of creation, but it will actually be set to 2.5 instead, okay? But if you did not mention it over here, it doesn't matter, it happens that. So, so we know that for a fact. Another thing, another catch that this one has is that the order of initialization in the initialization area must match the ones that you have. So what I have over here is wrong. I have first M volume, then M amount. But in here I have M amount first and then M volume. So if you do it on Visual Studio, it won't get, give you an error. But if you compile it on Linux, it's going to give you a warning telling you that the order of initialization is not a match. So remember to put these things in order. These are kind of an FYI, FYI thing for your information. So if you see, uh, you understand, whoa, you understand how it happens. So in here I'm going to say M volume. 
So I'm putting it in both versions for you to know. So you can do it both like this or like that. It doesn't make any difference. They are both initialization. And that universal initialization works for all of them. Any questions down to this point? Yes. No, no, no. You have to say what you are initializing. Okay? And later on in, in semester, when we learn inheritance, when you create one, up, one class out of another class, like when you have a bicycle and you make a motorcycle out of that one, to initialize the bicycle part of an inheritance thing, you use the same place. Okay? So initialization area initializes anything that the class owns. It could be the, the part that class inherited from something else, or it could be the pieces that the class has inside of it, anything. So if you have another class over there, you can actually write the constructor of the class over there. It looks like it's being called, but we know it's not a call. It is, so you're simply saying how I want a class to be created, okay? So, uh, so that's the initialization area. Uh, are we okay with this? Last thing that I want to talk about and tell you not to do is this, okay? Uh, so let me just save all these. So this, uh, <coughs> I'm going to say uh, a dot uh, container dot h, and in here I'm going to call it the name of the module it doesn't match the name of the class because I want you to just study it, okay? So if you want to execute it, you have to actually copy and paste the code. You know that, right? So in here, I'm going to say initializing, initializing uh, uh, attributes. And I'm going to call it inline initializing. Inline means inside the class. So inline function is a function, inside, inline method is a method whose description, whose uh, uh, code is inside the class. In, inline initialization, it means inside the, the class, okay? In, so inline initializing attributes, okay? Initialization of attributes, oh, yeah, that's okay, all right? And the other one for this one, for the CPP one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call it a dash container. Uh, and I'm going to call it initialization area usage dot CPP. So these two A's go together, okay? And I'm going to open up the, the container again, the old one that we had. So another thing that you see, now back to what we had before. So that was the initialization area and how to initialize the members. So if you have so many different constructors and each constructor is supposed to, you have so many different constructors and each constructor is supposed to do the same type of initialization to attributes, don't bother writing a function. You can simply do it in a class definition and then any constructor that is called have freshly initialized attributes to work with, okay? So this is very useful. Remember that. Now, let, this is the one that we don't have it, and we are doing it using functions and, and in it that we have. So, <clears throat> for example, all right, so, uh, just give me a second. I have to do something in here. Right. Okay, so that's that. Are we okay? Yes. So say what I want to happen over here 
is for the object before I do this, I want the object to be initialized and I want the content and the value to be zero. So you will see people doing stuff like this. First of all, we know what this is. We talked about it, right? We know it's the reference of the current object. It's the address of the current object. And when I say target of this, that is essentially the uh, reference of the current object, right? You will see code like this. And then they do the rest. So they say, okay, and then I'm going to actually uh, do whatever is needed. Like after this, I'm going to do something like init, uh, uh, whatever, um, say content. In. So what they want to do, they want to set the values to zero before they begin. And because the main constructor, the default constructor does that, they set everything to default before anything else, other things. Now, let's see what happens. I'm going to analyze to see what happens at line 11 and tell you why not do it, okay? When you call a constructor, when you write the code as if you are calling a constructor, a constructor will not be called. What happens at line 11 in that thing at right side of the assignment operator, you are requesting the compiler to create a nameless container using the default constructor. So at right side of the assignment operator, the, compi the, the compiler will create a nameless container object, therefore, using the default constructor, therefore the object will be all set to, uh, uh, what shall we call it, all set to um, zeros and nulls and everything, okay? So at right side, you have a nameless container with everything zero in it. Then it says, copy that nameless object blindly on me. This means me, right? So it will blindly go to the memory of that nameless object, byte by byte, copy everything from that one, because they are both same objects, to the current object that is just being created. Then it's going to kill the nameless object. So you will see a constructor call and a destructor call on one line. At, between lines 11 and 12, actually an object gets created and dies. You know how much overhead is that? You are asking the compiler to build the entire object and kill it just because you were lazy to write a function in it over there. So don't do that. You will see people do this. There is a reason that you can do this. There are places that you want to create nameless objects and return it to save time. Not programming time, execution time. We'll come to that. You will see it. But here, it's the worst thing you can do. And sadly, people do that. Profs do that. Books do that. Don't do it unless you know what it means. So. I tell you, don't use break in a loop. Don't use continue in a loop. Don't use go to statements. Make sure you indent your code so it's readable. And don't create nameless objects until you know what you're doing. OK? When you're a seasoned C++ programmer and understand how things work, then you can do stuff that are iffy. OK? I have to another, do another head count. <laughs> People are added to class. So, OK, so that's when you not, uh, uh, that, that's something that I'm going to remove. I don't want actually to, it to be in my notes. I just want it to be in the lecture. Please don't do that now, OK? When you understand how things work, by all means, use it, but not now. So uh, 
Anything else over here is missing that I need to explain? I don't think so. Any questions, anyone? Before, I'm going to give you an introduction to operator overloading. That's next, next week's lecture, okay? But I'm going to do an introduction today. Yes? Uh huh. Give me a second. Now say it, okay. Yes. Like, if I set like default values in that initialization area, do I have to do that in my implementation call too? So like, in the parameter list, like, you have to like. Uh, can you can you uh, dictate it so I can write it and see, or just go do it yourself? Uh, you can actually see my you can see my screen over there. Just oh. sit sit over there and do it. Like over here, you said like you know like a yeah. parameter here, but you don't put that in like your. Oh, so if you have a default value for the constructor, you are saying. Yes. So like. Oh, oh, come, 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 come! I'll explain. I'll explain. So. Okay. So take a seat. Take a seat. Don't worry. Okay. So you are saying, what happens if I, um, if if I don't have a default constructor here, for example. And this is something like uh, water, something like this, right? And then you are saying over here to do what? Like, I'm, I'm just asking if you have to put like, the initialization stuff in the header file and the Oh, 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 so, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Let's come over here. So let's say in here I want the amount over here, this this to be initialized to the amount. So you, you, are you talking about this? Wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about, let me just make some space over here. M amount. Like that. So yes, in the? In the header file. No, in the header file you can't do anything. Oh, you want to put like, like some initial value over here for the amount? Say over here 2.5? For, for the amount, sorry. Like in the, the very initialization area, I guess? Or the, or so initialization area, in header file, you don't have anything. You can't put anything. Okay. It's only in your CPP code. Okay. But all the values that are passed as arguments can be passed to initialize your... Uh, so, instead of, so instead of this... Uh, Mm, let's put it this way. So I'm going to fix that content thingy that I had over there. So in here, in this init, let's say I'm not setting the, the amount and volume, so I'll remove that. Let's say my init only initializes the, the, the uh, uh, what should we call it, the, the, the content. So in here, I'm going to fix that too. Where is my init? There we go. So if I have something like this, so init only initializes the, uh, the name, okay? So in here, instead of doing 100 and 100, obviously, I'm going to initialize it over here, going with the exact same order, putting m amount 100 and m volume 100. That's what I wanted to do, right? And in here, Instead of doing this, I'm going to say m amount amount and m volume. Again, you know you can put curly brackets to it. doesn't make any difference. Uh, volume. So you, you can positively, with absolutely no problem, use the arguments that you have to initialize these things. And even... Like if, like for example, I want to make sure that if, uh, what was the correction that we wanted to make? If the um, amount is bigger than volume, I want the amount to be volume. 
We wanted to do that, right? So in here, you can, in, in setting of your amount, you can actually say amount being greater than volume, put a question mark over here, then pass the uh, volume, and else pass the amount. So you can put little logics over there too. So you are saying set the amount, if the amount is greater than volume, to the volume, otherwise set it to the, so that will work perfectly too. And it will be initialized with a little logic, okay? Um, are we okay with that? All right. Save it, I'm just gonna rebuild it to make sure I don't have any boo-boos in here. Uh, rebuild. I do. Default, oh no, no appropriate default constructor available. Uh, okay, um, so I'm gonna just, this one I'm gonna just remove the, the default constructor. I'm gonna say, what am I gonna say? Uh, no, I'm not gonna remove default constructor, we need it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put the default constructor back. Default constructor back and rebuild. Yes, question? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> it's question. Okay, anyone, any question before we continue? So the next thing is just an introduction. I'm, don't get confused on me, okay? So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna write over here. Um, so we had A, now we can have B, and in here I'm gonna say container main. So let's create, you want to take a break before we continue? Anybody likes to take a break? All right. <laughs> the person who just came wants to take a break. Okay. <laughs> okay, five minutes break and then five, ten minutes break and we come back. And I'm going to make this ready by the time we come. I want to ask you to do something extremely important, and I'm tired of keep telling people, sending them links. Please do me a favor. Please do me a favor and always have the postings that I do on the Office Help team. Make sure you read them. Those are the places that I send you uh, uh, notes and important announcements. So take a look at this, for example, okay? This is OOP244. Requesting for extension, okay? Please read this and see exactly how I'm asking. I don't think that this is not recent. This is not updated. Why is it not updating the, the, the things? Oh. This is not updated. Yeah, the things over here. It's from nine years ago. What up? Anyways, look at the, the postings over here. The way, like, I ask request for extension. Please do that. How I ask you, do it that way. I tell you exactly, send me this. The reason is that I'll tell you what's going on. There are many little things that I have to do, okay? And adding small pieces, it doesn't look like, what I tell you, please take a look at the due date, see when the due date was, and then calculate from that date till now, okay? So it, if the due date was three days ago, and you need two days extension from now, you have to ask for five days, not for two days. Number one. Number two, give me the exact thing, like 244 slash W2 slash. The reason is that that's how the extension programming works. If I sit over there, try to do the math for you, go back, see where the due date was, I have to do 15 seconds extra time to do that for you. Add 15 seconds and multiply it by 40, that's the amount. And every single time, it's not 15 seconds, because I have to open it up, 
log in, test, write the command, it becomes two minutes. Two minutes multiplied by 40, you know how many minutes I have to spend just to calculate what you can do in 10 seconds? When you do want to get an extension, please see exactly what it is. Send me the correct information with proper information. And when you're asking for extension, I need your workshop zero path to see what you want extension for. It has to be updated. So when you ask me for that, I couldn't do the pointers for this one, that one. My program has memory leak. I need these many days of extension. And this is my repository's path. So I'll go to your repository path, take a look and see, and then when you fix it, I'll do the check, do the diff and see what did you do. So I'll monitor your progress and your history. Okay? Please do that. Follow those things so we can work quickly together. Okay? If you don't do that, then I have to spend time going through all these things. It means less time to spend with you. Okay? I need, to, I need more time to be able to have one-to-one -one sessions with you on Microsoft Teams, okay? And if you don't follow what the instructions that I tell you, then I have to do that for you and it takes more time. So please, this is extremely important in the field of study that you're in. Computer science is exact and unforgiving. Computer science is exact and unforgiving. You miss one semicolon, your program doesn't work. You miss one instruction, and I'm not going to help you. And it's the exact same thing. You go to work with a, for, with a big company. They give you a series of procedures to, to deploy certain things somewhere. You miss one of them, 50 servers go down, and TD Bank cannot do the ATM machines anymore. It's not a joke. You need to learn to be exact and follow instructions to the bone. I'm not a, a bad person by telling you if you don't do this, I'm not going to help you. I want to teach you something with that. If I be kind at you, I'm going to spoil you and that's the worst thing I can do. Please, and if you are hearing this recording, please follow the instructions. I'm going to send another announcement and hopefully that's going to help. Uh, we'll see. Uh, anyways. And I wish you could see what's happening over here. Um, okay. All right. All right. So uh, now uh, what I want to do, I, I actually wanted to do something in here before we, uh, uh, before we go to the next step. So... Um, let me, um, pa, pa, pa. what do I do? Um, okay, so uh, we have till 12.30, right? And that's enough for me to just give you a, a kind of a flush view of what we are going to learn next day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new a, a class to the, to the uh, today's session. I'm going to call it num. This is going to represent a number. Okay, there is no reason to create this class but to teach you. So don't tell me, why do we do that? We could simply use the number. No, I'm just, I just want to teach you something. Okay, and I'm not going to put the safeguards and stuff. I don't want to waste my time. You know it's supposed to have... Oh, sorry, delete. Uh, remove, delete. Okay, one more time. Uh, so I want to create a class. So yeah, so safeguards and stuff... Uh, uh, I'm not going to add because I just want to uh, teach something at that. So I'm going to create a class num, and I'm going to click OK, and that's going to create the num over it. Why is it not creating the CPP file for me? Something is wrong in here. Remove. Am I missing something? I'm going to say add a class num h and num cpp okay okay visual city this 2022 has ginormous amount of bugs i have no idea what's going on anyways new item i'm going to add the num cpp over here for it the heck with it i wanted to save time but it just confused the heck out of me all right so num cpp <laughs> 
So source files, numcpvs, num header file. So I want to create a class over here. I'm going to call it a class num. OK, and this number has a, a value. Are we OK with this? So I have the value, and, 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 and I want to display, set and display that number. So I'm going to say I'm going to create it as public. I'm going to create a constructor for it. So let me split the screen over here and create the, bring the num up and split the window. Again, my apologies. I'm not doing the safeguards and stuff. I want to be quick. Uh, so include num dot oh damn it. did I do did I type it incorrectly? You want to save your time, right? Yeah, that, that's called Murphy's law. Uh, save lots of time, man. Lots and lots of time. Okay, so again, take two. So include num.h, that's much better. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to create the constructor. So I have a default constructor. I'm going to create actually a regular constructor, integer value, and set the value 0 for it. Therefore, when I create, uh, OK. Usually, it should give me something in here. It's, it's, it's really creepy today. Am I making a mistake here? Is there anything missing in here? Am I doing something wrong? I have a header file, num.h, num.cpp. Pardon me? Yeah, it should be. I created it at the same place. Yeah, num.h, num.cpp. I don't know, something's wrong today. Well, I'll have to do everything manually, I presume. OK, so I want to save time. Num, num, and int value in here. OK, and it's going to set the value to whatever it is. So I'm going to have m value set to value. OK, and I'm going to create a, 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 in CPP file, I'm just going to include num.h, so include num.h. Obviously, I don't have the namespace, so uh, it's not going to work that way. So I'm going to say over here, num uh, n equals to 10. That's going to be 10. And num m, if I just do like this, that's going to be 0, right? Uh, so this is what I'm doing. Simply, I create a constructor. Uh, and that's that. I don't have an SDDS over here. I'm going to remove it. Now I want to display the number over here, so I'm going to create a display. Oh, I'm going to do the display the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, so I'm going to say include uh, IO stream. And in here, I'm going to say STD uh, O stream display STD O stream. I'm going to say C out reference. And I'm going to set it to STD C out. This is how we create. Uh, uh, this is how we create uh, display functions for our classes. Why? Because the sky is high. That's do it for now, and we'll see what happens. Now it's giving me an error on STD. What did happen here? Pardon me? No, it's header file. The whole idea. Anyways, we'll see what happens. And then I'm going to create something really fishy. Well, I'll probably later on find out, find out that I did something. Is my keyboard correct? What is my language? I don't know. Anyway, so now in here I'm going to do the display. So. Uh, Include IO, IO stream, obviously. IO stream. And I'm going to have over here, this here I'm going to have using namespace STD, obviously. And then in here I'm going to say uh, uh, O stream. O stream, refer. Oh, 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 oh. 
that has to be referenced, that has to be referenced. That's why it was wrong. It was my fault. Okay, O stream reference. Display uh, num. Display and it's going to be uh, O stream. Uh, C out reference and I'm going to write the code for this. And it's going to be a const because I don't want to change the object, so I'm going to make it const. So that's that. And in here, all I'm doing is displaying the uh, displaying the uh, the number. So I'm going to say C out um, m value. Okay, and return C out ref. So save everything. Go to CPP. Test it to see if it works. So in here, I'm going to say n.display, and I'm going to say end l, n.display, and l, usual stuff, compile and run, and see if it's going to know. Let me, let me remove these. Uh, you were saying? In here? No, using namespace ST. Line 8? Oh, that's your, your right. Reference. Reference, reference. Oh, and we didn't do it. Uh, let me just see if it's here. Num. Something's wrong with me, I guess. And we have num display. Num display. I have that. I have this. Run it one more time. Oh, did I? No, it's, this is public. Class num public. What is the error? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. str len? What str len? Am I compiling? Container, container. Remove container. Was that the reason? No. Undefined symbol num int. I cannot believe the thing I wanted to do went bad like this. Num and num. Okay, let me let me. Let me re I, I just don't understand what the heck happened. Let me just do it one more time. Start the Visual Studio. OK. All right, so. Rebuild. Still the same problem. And const c out ref, c out ref, returning a reference, reference. What the devil is going on here? Let me just close one more time. I just wanted to do a little thing over here and remove, remove. I don't want to include anything. Class num. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to do it again over here. And uh, public. And in here, I'm going to say int m value. And 
a constructor num int value set to zero and m value is set to value and I have uh, O stream reference. I'm going to write everything in line over here. Um, display O stream reference C out ref uh, C out const and I'm going to say C out ref M value return and compile and run this. Seriously? Okay, now it's working. I have no idea what the devil happened, but it's showing 10 for both for some unknown reason. Um, oh, because it's both N and M. Okay, so back to business. I'm just going to use inline. Something is wrong. I'll find out and I'll let you know. Uh, so are we okay with down to this point with the little thing that I created over here? I created a, a class called num, and that class num of mine is uh, just printing the value. Are we good? Are we okay? Any problem with this? No? Yes? Could you explain line 9? Line 9? Yeah. I'm displaying the... So this, this did, didn't we talk about this in class? No? Okay. Because I don't want to make that point. I'm going to do like this. So probably you're going to see it in a workshop and you'll understand how it works. Is it better now? You remember returning O-Stream, right? So let me at least do that. Is it better now? Okay? All right. So it's returning the two numbers. So if I run it again, it's going to write 10 and 0, right? Now, I want to be able to set the number to something. So I want to say over here void set, and in here I'm going to say int value. So like this, I can set the value to something that I want. So I'm going to say in value is value, okay? So now I can actually go do something like n.set, and I put 1,000 in here, and say n.display, and go to new line. Are we OK with this? And why is it giving me an error, n.set? Oh, what is nl over here? I have no idea. There you go. So I'm just setting the number, right? Any problem with that? So if I run this, now it's going to be set to 1,000. Are we OK? OK, I'm going to remove that M over there. Next thing, let's say I want to add one number to another. What do I do? I'll go void add to this number. So I'm going to call it int value. And in here, I'm going to say M value plus equal value, right? That's going to add a number. So now I can say over here something like n.add, say 300, and I'll go n.display, and 300 will be added to it. So I have 1,300. Any problem with this? Anyone? No problem? Let's say I want to add two numbers together. So I'm going to write a helper function for myself. I'm going to say void add. Actually, no, I cannot say void because I want to return the number. So I'm going to say num add and num reference constant. I don't want to change it. I want to add two numbers. Const in here, I'm going to say number uh, const number reference left, const number reference right. And in here, what I'm going to do is, uh, what do I do? I got to get the value of both, so I'm going to create a function over here called value. I'm going to say int value, that, and is a const, of obviously, just returning the value so I have access to it. OK? So in here, I'm going to say num. 
sum and I initialize it with left dot value plus right dot value and I return it, return sum. Okay, now if I have the second thing over here, num n m, and I make that another thousand, in here I can, and I have another one, num s, I can say over here, s is s dot add, and what do I do? I'm gonna say, or I can call this sum, just no, the same name, no. Add in here, I'm gonna say, what do I call it? I'm gonna say n and m, then I'm going to say s dot display and an, oh uh, s dot display and I go to new line. So if I run this program now, it's going to receive n and m constant reference left and right. Why is it giving me an error? Oh, s is equal to not s dot. S is equal to add n and m, right? So when I run this, I'm going to see that. Are we okay with this? Any problem down to this point? Huh? Line what? 23. 23. So this is the constructor of, of, of num being called, correct? Constructor of num can get one value, correct? And that one value is the sum of the value of left and right. I put a plus in between. So I create it. Or if you don't like it, I can do it like this, if it makes, makes you happy. Um, sum, so I can create one by default over here. Then I'll go sum.set. Is, is, is that better? Right? OK. We're going to make it even better than that later on. But are we good? So the results are the same. It didn't do any difference. It, nothing is different, right? So OK, that's a beautiful question. Can we return a reference of some in here? OK, assume, oh. If I get out of this room, I'll die. Can I help you outside of this class? No. Right? Some is going to die when it goes out of num. You cannot send its reference out. It's dead. Right? So what's going to go out? A copy of it. When you do like that, it sends a copy out of it. That's how functions work. When functions return things by value, they return a copy out of it. All right? Are we good? So now that I have this thing over here, I'm going to save it as, I'm going to call it C, I'm going to say uh, functional operations, non-functional operator. Non-functional operations. That makes sense, right? These are functional operations. Instead of regular plus and equal and stuff like that, I wrote function. So set essentially means, when I say set, it means n is equal to 1,000. Do we appreciate that? When I say n add 300, I'm saying n plus equal 300, correct? When I say s is equal to add n m, I mean s is equal to n plus m, correct? Do we all appreciate that? Okay, so let's go back to our thing over here. I'm not going to change anything but renaming functions. I'm not doing anything, people. I'm just renaming functions. So I'm going to call this set operator equal. I didn't do anything. Just change the name. I'm going to call this add operator plus equal. Just renamed it. And I'm going to call this add operator operator plus I didn't change anything and obviously in here when I have a set I'm gonna call this set 
Why is it giving me this error? Oh, stupid compiler. OK. <laughs> OK, and I'm, obviously this set has to be changed too. So I'm going to call it operator plus equal. Operator set, sorry. Operator equal. Because that's the function name now. I changed it, right? I just, I'm just renaming. So this set is going to be operator equal. This add is going to be operator plus equal. And this one is going to be operator plus. Correct? Right? And if I run the func program, exactly the same. Do we all appreciate what have I done? I just renamed functions, correct? OK. So this is actually D. using operator calls, correct? Now, I'm going to go back here again. See what I'm going to do? Every single function who is created by an operator name can be called using its operator signature, which means instead of saying n operator equal 1,000, I can say n n is set to operator 1000. Instead of saying n operator plus equal, I can say plus equal. Instead of saying n is equal operator plus, I can say n is equal n plus m. And I run the program, works exactly the same. Welcome to operator overloading. Now you can make your operators do anything you want. If I'm nuts enough, I can create an operator minus and make it do multiplication for me. Crazy. But you can. So, because you can, you shouldn't do it. I cannot say from now on, hello means goodbye. You can't do that. That's just stupid. And anyway, I'll go. I say hello whenever I come. I say goodbye, everyone. I can't do that. Doesn't make sense. Okay? Also, helper operators. When I call it helper, this is helper operator. Okay? Helper operators are not usually necessary. It's a bad thing to do. All helper operators could be uh, member operators. So you only use helper operators when you don't have access to the guts of the class. You cannot modify a class. Let me show you. Let's say I want to now do something like, say, s is set to, uh, which one is big? I'm going to say n minus m. n minus m. OK? From what we learned up there, from what we learned here, between two things, I can make this a member as, as follows. I can say s is equal to n dot operator minus, and I pass an m to it, correct? I could do it that, exactly like I did it for this one and this one. What's the difference? Now that I know what the signature of the operator is, let me create it. So this operator, first of all, returns a Num, correct? So I'll start there. I'm going to say num. I'm not going to make it a reference unless I can. So we'll see if I can make it a reference. OK. Number two, it, ha it is operator minus. So I'm going to say operator minus. What does it receive? It receives a num, correct? Num, obviously, it's got to be a constant num reference. I don't want to change it. That's the right one, correct? Then who is left? This is left. The object itself is left. So in here, I'm going to say this is left. Now, let's do it accordingly. First of all, I don't, I don't want to change the left, correct? I have to enforce it. I'm going to say const, don't change the left. Now, I do the code exactly like I did for over here. I'm going to say num, uh, 
deduct or uh, I don't know minus okay and in here what I'm going to create reducing the value of the current by the one that is coming at right correct so I'm gonna say m value minus I don't need to use the value thingy anymore because it's a member function now minus value minus right side is right dot m value and I create that value and I return it done so now I have minus in here you follow so I don't need so I could call it like that or call it like this so creating a helper operator should be done only if you have no choice let me give you an ex uh, example what is this end dot display thing I don't want it I want to write over here C out N like everything else I want to write that what is the operator that is missing in here that's the one right and it's supposed to so I should write an operator what I told you so what is C out C out is O stream right I should write O stream dot operator and receive a nummy I can't do that I don't have access to O stream I cannot code the O stream so what I do over here I'm gonna see what is this this operator I'm gonna write it as a helper operator because I don't have access to C out so I'm gonna write a helper operator operator and I'm gonna do it like that what is the left one what is the left side of this guy C out what is the type of C out O stream so in here I'm gonna say O stream reference left what is sitting at right num and I don't want to change it that's one I just want to display it right so I'm gonna say const num reference that's right correct so what do I do in here I'm gonna say I want to display the right correct I'm gonna say right dot display correct and what do I return what do I need to return in here what do I need to return in here so the NL can get printed C out so what is C out I have it here that's the left one and it's an O stream reference so I'm gonna say O stream reference and it's the one that I just received so I'm just gonna say return left done now I can print everything using C out so I don't need to write that display thingy like that anymore I'm just gonna just write C out N and this one was uh, S actually don't worry this is just a preview I'm gonna go through everything in detail later on right from scratch I just want to tell you C++ is easy and it's logical take a look the code that is written over here is beautiful C out N and is if somebody doesn't know they think n is something that belongs to C++ I just made some boo-boos in here because I cannot do it like this anymore right if I say C is set to n plus C is set to n plus I can do that in C right so what's missing in here because the assignment over here I made it void correct remember I told you never do void if you have void return the reference of the current object if we did that we never had this problem so this is num reference and I'm gonna return this and even plus equal why do I do that num reference and return this now in here I can say s is equal to n yada 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 and I'm gonna go c out s and it works perfectly for it if I want to do plus equal I can I can say s is equal to plus equal n that works perfectly
because now it's returning the reference of that one. And if I run the program, it works perfectly. Absolutely no difference. C++ is easy and logical. Follow the logic. It gives you the answer automatically. OK? So that's operator. That's the whole thing is what we are going to learn in the next two weeks. And we did it in what? 25 minutes. Including the problem I had with the num class, right? I wanted to do it in num class, but hey, I did it like this. So just keep that in mind. Next week you're coming. We're going to start from the beginning, analyzing the operators, see how they work, and understand how they behave so we can overload them properly. Are we good? Have yourself a wonderful day. Any questions? Uh, the quiz is going to be uh, on, a, on a thingy. Next, next week, it's going to be in the class. Today, is, uh, I'm going to open it for, uh, for 24 hours again. Whenever I open it, you have 24 hours to do it. And you get an announcement on, the, on, on Blackboard. OK, you get an announcement on Blackboard. It gets open for 24 hours. Next day, it's going to be in class. And I might ask you to write a program for me, not quiz on multiple choice stuff. So I'm going to ask you in 10 minutes to write a constructor and destructor. That's what I'm going to do. You all right? Pardon me? Yes, yes, yes. Quiz this week is there. All right. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day.